Hey guys, welcome back to another workshop tutorial. Today I am going to show you how you can set up your bass like a pro, getting that good, low, fast action with minimal fret buzz, and we're not going to use any special tools. You will need some tools, but they are not special tools. They are tools that you probably already have. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. So if you've watched a lot of videos or read a lot of blogs on how to properly set up your guitar, um, you probably saw lots of people using a lot of special tools like uh, gauges and things like that that are going to tell you um, the proper specifications for pickup height or string height or things of that nature. Um, but the truth is, um, those special tools are great for getting you into the ballpark to adjust your strings and your pickup height and your neck relief and things like that to spec but spec isn't necessarily awesome for everyone. So much of your bass's action is completely subjective. Lots of people like to play with a super low action. Lots of people also like to play with a higher action because you can actually get better, fatter tone with a higher action. But with a lower action, you can get faster playing. And so it totally depends on personal preference and personal playing style, as well as technique. Are you really digging into the strings hard or are you just barely touching them? So a lot of this setup is completely subjective based on your playing style. So the tips I'm gonna give you are just going to get you into the ballpark of the lowest action that you can get with minimal fret buzz. Then you can kind of season to taste. Now these steps are best done after you've completely leveled and crowned your frets. And if you don't know how to do that, check out my video on how to make your own pro luthier tools because in that video I show you not only how to make your own tools, but I also show you how to use them to level and crown your frets. That's gonna give you a good clean slate for starting your setup, um, and that's how you're going to get the lowest possible action with minimal fret buzz. Now there really aren't very many tools that you actually need to do a good setup on your bass. So the first is going to be a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, the second are going to be just the Allen keys that came with your bass, or if it didn't come with any, uh, you're going to need a set of Allen keys. Now, in addition, if you're going to need to do some work on your nut, you'll need a few more things. A file is a good thing to have, or some sandpaper with a flat hard surface. Um, a small straight edge is handy. Regular old Elmer's glue or wood glue. And then a razor blade is also handy. And I'll show you why you might need those here in a second. Now a proper bass setup can be broken up into three different categories. The first is action. So that's your overall string height and how it interacts with your fretboard. The second is going to be your pickup height and that's how your pickup interacts with your strings, trying to get the best tone possible as well as even volume across all your pickups. And the third is intonation and that's how your strings stay in tune the further you go up the fretboard. So if you find that your bass is in tune when you play some of the lower notes, but then once you get up to the higher notes that are more out of tune, you need to adjust your intonation. So let's go ahead and start at the top of the list. Let's start with action. Okay, the first part of the action that we're gonna adjust is this nut piece up here. Now the nut piece not only affects the radius of your strings across the fretboard, but it also adjusts the overall string height um, across the entire fretboard. So if you wanna have a good low playable action, you really need to start with the nut piece. To measure the proper height for your nut piece, take your straight edge and nestle it inside one of the string grooves, preferably the E or the G string. Then let it rest on the second fret. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the space between your straight edge and the first fret. To get a good low playable action, you want that distance between the straight edge and the first fret to be about a millimeter or less. You can go a bit taller if you know that you're gonna be playing with a higher action, but I recommend a millimeter or less. So basically, if you can slide a thin piece of cardboard from like a cereal box between it, um, that's probably your optimum height. So do the same thing for both your low E string and your high G string. If you don't have a small straight edge to do this step, you can actually just tune up your string and then pinch down on that second fret. Now, before you guys get on your high horse and tell me that I'm pinching the third fret right there, this right here is not the third fret. This right here is the third fret. This right here is the second fret. This right here is the space between the second and the third fret. So pinch down there, yes, you're pinching down the third fret, but you're also pinching down the second fret, and that's the fret that we are concerned with. So pinch the string on that fret, 
Um, make sure it's nestled good inside of your string's slot on the nut piece, and then have a look at the distance between that string and the first fret. Again, we're going for one millimeter or less. You do not want it touching the fret. If it's touching the fret, your nut is too low, so you are going to have to shim that nut piece back up. Um, but we're gonna assume that your nut piece is too high, like mine is in this demonstration. So here's how we're going to fix that. Go ahead and pop out that nut piece, and if it's glued down, you may need a razor blade to kind of knock that glue loose a little bit before you pop it out. Once it's popped out, go ahead and take that nut piece and just run it along the edge of your file, or if you don't have a file, you're using sandpaper on a hard surface, just go ahead and rub it back and forth to remove a little bit of material from the bottom of the nut piece. Now, some people will say that you need to cut your slot deeper in the nut, but I don't recommend doing that. Unless you have a set of nut files and you really know what you're doing, just leave those string slots alone and adjust the overall height the way I'm showing you right now. Frequently check as you're doing this to make sure that you're not going too low on one end or the other. And if you find that you're a little bit taller on one side than the other, make sure you apply pressure to that side as you're doing this. That way you wear down that one side more than you wear down the other one. But also make sure that you're still applying some pressure on the other side. That way you maintain a nice flat surface on the bottom of the nut. Okay, now that we've got this nut piece looking good, let's go ahead and put it back in. Now to put it back in, we're gonna apply just a little bit of glue and you don't wanna use super glue or something that you can't unstick again. The purpose of this glue, and as you can see here, I'm just using regular Elmer's school glue, but the purpose of this glue is actually just to hold the nut in place when you take the strings off. We don't need to glue it down in there real good because chances are you'll eventually wear down the nut and need to replace it at some point, so you wanna be able to get it back off. So just a real light, just a couple drops of glue is all you need to hold the nut into the slot um, for future when you're changing your strings, that way it doesn't fall out and you lose it or something like that. Okay, the next thing that we're going to adjust on our action is going to be neck relief. And that's how the neck bows forward and translates to string height at around the 12th fret. Now, different guitars can have their bow at different parts in the neck, anywhere between like the 9th and the 15th fret. This particular one has its bow more around the 15th fret than it does the 12th fret. So that's where I'm going to be looking. So to adjust the neck relief, what we're going to be doing is adjusting the truss rod, which is this little Allen key that's nestled in the top of your neck, or some bases actually have it nestled in the bottom of the neck. But to adjust this, you're gonna need the larger of the two Allen keys. So to adjust our neck relief, the first thing you wanna do is string it up with whatever gauge strings you plan to use and tune it to whatever tuning you plan to use. What you'll do is you'll take your E string and pinch it both on the first fret and the last fret. And you're gonna look down at around the 12th fret for any space or gap between the string and the fret. Now what we're looking for is the largest gap. It's not necessarily gonna be at the 12th fret, but it should be close. But I've found that that gap can show up anywhere between the 9th fret and the 15th fret. And in this case, we are closer to the 15th fret. But the gap that you want, again, we're looking for about a millimeter or less of space between the string and that fret. So to adjust it, Stick your Allen key into your truss rod, and if you tighten righty tighty, what that's gonna do is pull your neck back. So if your action is too tall when you're pinching down on the first and last fret, it's taller than a millimeter at around your 12th fret. You're gonna want to tighten the truss rod to pull the neck bow back. If you find that when you're pinching the first and last fret that your string is touching all of the frets, then you're gonna need to loosen your truss rod. So go ahead and loosen it up, retune your base, and then check again for neck relief and keep doing that until you have about a millimeter of space. Then you wanna check again with your high G string doing the same thing, pinching at the first and the last fret. And hopefully you'll have about the same gap at your G string as you do for your E string. Now, if you don't, then what you have is a slight twist in your neck and that's not really a good thing, but you can compensate for it a little bit. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to split the difference between your E string and your G string to try to get them both as close to a millimeter as possible. It's okay if one's a little bit lower, one's a little bit higher. That's what you're gonna try to do to compensate for a twisted neck. But assuming that it looks good like it now does on this base, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the last bit of adjusting your action and that's adjusting the string height at the bridge saddles. Now adjusting your string height at your bridge saddles 
What it does is very similar to the nut piece and it adjusts your overall string height across the entire fretboard. It's basically your nut piece, but on the other side. But the more important purpose of adjusting the bridge saddles is to get that perfect radius. And that's how your strings hover across the radius of the fretboard. So here's definitely one of those places that people like to use those gauges to get the perfect string height across the entire fretboard radius. But as you'll find out, it's not actually necessary. So we're gonna go ahead and start out by adjusting the string heights of the E string and the G string. And you're gonna take your smaller Allen wrench and you're either gonna tighten or loosen these small Allen screws that are in your bridge saddles to raise or lower it. Now, my trick for doing this step without any gauges is that again, string up the base with whatever gauge strings you wanna play with, tune it to whatever tuning you're gonna be using, and then just play your bass. Now, a little bit of fret buzz is okay. It's not gonna come through on recordings or through your amp, but a lot of fret buzz will. So this is one of those things that you can kind of season to taste. How much fret buzz are you willing to tolerate for the style of music that you're gonna play? But my rule is I actually just go as low as I can on the E string without any fret buzz or with minimal fret buzz that I can tolerate. So just keep lowering it, keep playing it, and listen for that fret buzz. Then once you've got it as low as it can go with as much fret buzz as you want to tolerate, go ahead and do the same thing for the high G string. Now there's a good chance you'll be able to get your high G string quite a bit lower than your low E string with a lot less fret buzz. And that's for two reasons. One, your high G string has quite a bit more tension on it. So it's not gonna be flopping around near as much. And two, the diameter of that string is quite a bit smaller. So it's less mass flying around to try to hit those frets. So if you end up with your E string higher than your G string, that's actually fine. And we're gonna leave it like that for now. Then what I will do, again, instead of using gauges, I'm just going to play the bass and I'm gonna see how the A and D strings feel in relation to the E and the G strings. And basically what you want Again, we're going for that perfect radius. And again, this is something that's subjective. And so typically what I do is instead of like I did for the E and the G string by going as low as I can with minimal fret buzz that I can tolerate, I'll actually just go for what feels good across my fingers as I play the instrument. Because it's subjective, you might want the middle strings to be a little bit taller. You might want them not to be quite so tall, but you'll need a little bit of radius um, or else it's gonna feel really funky on your fretboard and your middle strings might get more fret buzz than your outer strings. So once you've got it feeling the way you want, just double check again on those middle strings to make sure you're not getting any fret buzz or you're getting minimal fret buzz that you can tolerate. So at this point, you should have a really good low fast action. If you don't have a nice low fast action, you're finding that you have to raise your strings up really high in order to prevent fret buzz, then it means that your neck needs a full fret job. So that's gonna be where you're gonna wanna watch my other video and completely level and crown your frets because that's gonna be the only way that you're going to get your action lower without fret buzz. But at this point, you should have a nice low fast action and you can kind of season it to taste. So if you find that it's actually too low for your play in style, then you might wanna take your smaller Allen key again and just a quarter turn at a time, raise your bridge saddles until you're getting the action that you want. Okay, now that we have our action set the way we want, we're gonna move on to adjusting the pickup height. Now it's important that you do have your action set before you start this because once you start messing with your pickup height, if you go back and decide you wanna adjust your action some more, well, you're gonna mess up your pickup height because you're moving the string up and down in relation to where the pickup magnets are. Now pickup height is important because your pickups are designed with a sweet spot, so to speak, of string heights compared to the pickup pull pieces of where you're gonna get the most or the best sound out of it. Now if your pickups are made by a major manufacturer, there's a good chance that you can look up online the exact specifications that they recommend for your pickup height. But again, that's just a starting point. So really, this is subjective. Only you know what kind of tone you wanna hear out of your pickups. So a lot of this, we're just gonna be using our ears. So if you can't find that information available online anywhere, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to properly adjust your pickup height. For this step, you're going to need that Phillips head screwdriver. And how you make your adjustments depends on how your pickups are mounted. If they're mounted in the body, like this base is, then tightening your screws is actually going to lower 
your pickup. But if you have pickups that are mounted to the pick guard, then tightening the screw is actually going to lift your pickup up closer to the strings. Now, when you're working with a bass that has more than one pickup, or in this case, we've got three pickups, you want to start with your bridge pickup first. And here's why. The bridge pickup is obviously closer to the bridge, so it's picking up a lot less vibration than your neck pickup. Your neck pickup, it's vibrating nice and wide there, and it kind of chokes up the closer that it gets. So that translates to less output on your bridge pickup. So if you start adjusting your neck pickup to your sweet spot, and then try to blend in your bridge pickup, you might find that you can't get enough signal to properly balance with your neck pickup. But if you start with your bridge pickup, and you get that into its sweet spot, then you should have plenty of room for adjustment with your neck to get the output to balance a lot better. And again, for my method, we're actually going to be using our ears. So go ahead and plug your bass into your amp and solo your bridge pickup only. And just play, again, with your normal desired playing style. And this is going to be subjective, again, because it depends on whether you're really going to be digging into your strings or if you're going to be playing with a lighter touch. Now, if you're like me and you play with a really wide dynamic spectrum, that means sometimes you're really digging into those strings and other times you are barely touching them, then my recommendation is to play on the heavier side. Because with my method, what we're going to do is we're going to move that pickup as close to the strings as possible without overloading the output signal of the pickup. That means when you're playing on your low E string and you're digging in as hard as you can, you don't want Want any distortion coming through. So get your pickup as close as you can to your strings and really dig into those strings and listen for that distortion. Bring it up until you slightly hear that distortion and then back it off just a tad. Play on it a little bit to make sure that distortion is not going to come through at all with any of your playing styles, whether you play with a pick, whether you play slap, whether you play fingers, and just dig in as much as you can. Again, you can kind of season it to taste. If you like the tone that you're getting, just leave it right there. But if you're finding that it's maybe a little too powerful, a little too mid-rangey, then you can start lowering it down a little bit. Now my experience, and this isn't necessarily true with all bass pickups, but in my experience, as you lower it away from the strings, not only is the volume output gonna get lower, but it's also gonna kind of start scooping the mids. So if you want a lot brighter sound, you might wanna lower it a little bit. Or if you want that mid-range growl to really punch through the mix of a full band, then leave it on the higher side. So once we have the bridge pickup height set the way we want, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the neck pickup, or in this case, since it's a three pickup bass, which is kind of more rare, we're gonna move on to the middle pickup. But what you're gonna do now is, instead of just trying to get it as close to the strings as possible without distortion, what you're actually gonna be doing is you're gonna be listening for how that pickup sounds in comparison to your bridge pickup. So, solo your bridge pickup and jam on your bass. Then, solo your middle or your neck pickup and jam on your bass some more and see if you're getting more or less signal from it. And you just wanna balance it out so you're getting about the same, okay? Basically, when you switch pickups, you don't wanna drop in volume, you don't wanna boost in volume. Switching pickups should just be a tone preference. It shouldn't necessarily be like a rhythm or lead boost, though you can set up your pickups that way if you want. I don't recommend it. I recommend using your pickups just to shape your tone. Then once you have both of your pickups to the same output level, then go ahead and do the same thing for your neck pickup if you have one, or if that was your neck pickup that you were adjusting because you only have two pickups, then what you wanna do is play with both pickups full on and listen, and then blend one out and make sure that you're not getting a boost or a drop in volume as you blend out or blend in one of your pickups. Now, if you find that both of your pickups have an even output when they're soloed, but together you have a drop in volume, then what you're experiencing is a phenomenon known as phase cancellation. And I could probably do a whole video dedicated to phase cancellation, but if you play with both your pickups together often, you don't necessarily want the volume to drop as opposed to having each one soloed. So if your preference is to play more often with both pickups than each one soloed, my recommendation is to choose whichever pickup you're gonna play with the least when soloed, whether that's just the bridge or just the neck, and then use that pickup to adjust your output when both pickups are on together. So if you need more output, raise or lower that pickup that you use the least when it's soloed. And again, you don't wanna raise it so much that you're getting that distortion. If that's the case, then you're gonna to have to go back and adjust your other pickups. But the most important thing for adjusting pickup height is to use your ears and not your eyes. You may find that to get even output across all the strings, you might need to have your pickup tilted at an angle so it's closer to your higher strings and further away from your lower strings or vice versa. So, you might get something that looks a little uneven like this bass, but 
We want a nice even sound. We don't need a nice even look. That is not as important. And again, all of this is purely subjective based on your preference. So once you've followed all of my steps and you've gotten a, a good level output across all your pickups, but then you find that you're not necessarily getting your sweet spot with your neck pickup as opposed to your bridge pickup, season to taste. There's no right or wrong here, okay? What's right is what feels good and sounds good to you, okay? So you just do what's gonna sound best for you, for your playing style, for your music style, and go from there. Again, all of this is just to get you in the ballpark of what professionals do when they're setting up their instruments. So follow these steps, get in the ballpark. If you need to make some small tweaks here and there, don't think that you're doing it wrong, you're not. In fact, you're probably doing it right because you're doing what feels good to you, which is the most important thing. Okay, now that we've set our action and our pickup height, the last thing we're gonna do is set our intonation. Now it's very important that you do this step very last. And you may even want to take a few days to play on your guitar to make sure that your setup is the way you want it before you do this step. Because as you tweak your strings action, you're actually going to mess with your intonation quite a bit. So make sure that your string action is set the way you want it exactly before you start this step. Now intonation affects how your strings stay in tune as you go up the fretboard. So it's very important to get good intonation, otherwise you may find that your upper frets are not in tune with your lower frets. This will be exposed especially when you're playing in a band setting. You start climbing into those upper frets and you're gonna find that you are out of tune with the rest of the band. It also might be noticeable if you are playing some open strings along with some of your higher notes, you're gonna find that your bass is out of tune. So to adjust our intonation, to make sure we're staying in tune all the way up the fretboard, we're going to adjust our bridge saddles and we're gonna be adjusting how far forward or how far back they are. Now in the case of this bridge and different bass bridges are adjusted differently, but in the case of this one, we're gonna use our Phillips head screwdriver again, and we're gonna use these set screws in the back to either pull the saddle further back or to move it further forward. Again, for this step, I recommend that you string up your bass with whatever gauge strings you like to play on. Then you need to plug into a tuner of some kind. So a lot of guitar techs and guitar luthiers will tell you that you need a really high-end special tuner that is extremely sensitive. Um, and that is the best case for the best results. But I realize you guys aren't pro guitar techs or luthiers, so you probably don't have access to that kind of equipment. So just use whatever tuner you have, whether that's just like a Boss tuner pedal or one of those little clip-on snark things, that's fine. That's going to get you at least in the ballpark of where you need to be. And there's a good chance that when you're playing in a band setting, uh, you're not gonna notice it. Now, if you're a studio musician, then you are gonna wanna use a really high sensitive tuner for this step so that you can get it perfect because if you're in a studio session, people are paying a lot of money for that studio, they might be paying a lot of money for you to be playing, um, they're not gonna wanna deal with you being out of tune. So you wanna make sure that you take it to a guitar tech or you invest in a really good sensitive tuner when you're doing this step. So to adjust your intonation, again, what you're gonna wanna do is string it up with your favorite gauge strings and then tune it to your standard tuning using the open strings. Then once all of your open strings are in tune, go ahead and tune one of your strings, whichever string you're gonna start on first, using the 12th fret harmonic. Now, if you don't know how to do that, basically you're just gonna be placing your finger on your string right above the 12th fret, but you're not actually going to fret the note. Just touch the string there with your finger and then pluck or pick however you typically play your bass and then tune your string based on that note. Once your string is in tune with your 12th fret harmonic, you're gonna compare it to actually fretting that 12th fret. So what you're gonna do is you're just barely gonna pull it down just far enough to get a good solid note. You're not going to pinch it really hard and pull it sharp, but just as much as you need to get a good solid note. And again, you're just barely gonna lightly pluck, or if you're a pick player, use a pick, just as light as possible, and compare that note to how your 12th fret harmonic was. So if you tuned it to your 12th fret harmonic, you'll probably notice that your fretted 12th fret note is going to be either sharp, that means it's gonna be a higher pitch than your harmonic was, or it's gonna be flat, lower pitch than your harmonic was. Now if you found that your fretted note is sharp or a higher pitch than your harmonic, then what you're gonna to need to do is move your bridge saddle back towards the bridge away from the headstock. If your fretted note is flat in comparison to your harmonic, you're gonna to wanna to move that saddle forward closer to the headstock. Now with each adjustment that you make, you are going to need to detune the string, then retune it with the open string, then retune it again with the harmonic. 
and then check again. Is your fretted note sharp or flat? And adjust your saddle accordingly. Now it's important that when you're doing this step that you're doing it so that you get good tuning, not so that you get pretty bridge saddles. Now you'll find sometimes that all your saddles will line up perfectly. Sometimes you'll find that they line up at a nice clean angle. Sometimes, like this one, you'll find that they are just kind of all over the place random. So, you're not necessarily looking for something pretty, you're looking for something in tune. So once you've done that for one string, go ahead and do it for all of your strings and then double check as you're playing these upper notes, are they staying more or less in tune with your lower notes? So once you've got that all set, then your guitar is completely set up, you're ready to go out and gig it, you're ready to go to the studio, you're ready to do some home recording, whatever it is you do with your bass, you're all set and good